Hey everybody, it's Ripley here again, and we're going to move forward with solving for other known trig values using the unit circle. So I'm going to build myself a unit circle right here, but I'm only going to use the first quadrant. So I'm only going to play over here in this first quadrant, up here in quadrant one. We'll discuss the other quadrants here in just a sec. I'm actually going to draw that a little bit bigger out here in just a minute. All right, so we know the trig values sine, cos, tangent, cosecant, secant, cotangent for quadrantal angles, i.e. angles that ha whose terminal side is on one of that four axes. Right? It's relatively easy because those are going to be the points 1, 0. We know it's 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, and 0, negative 1. And then, of course, we know that sine is y, cos is x, tangent is y over x, and then cosecant, secant, and cotan are just reciprocals of sine, cos, and tangent, respectively. But I'm going to build some, some values that I know, okay? I'm going to grab some free values, some more angles, because as you can probably tell, there's an uncountably infinite number of angles. If I grab, I'm going to change my color real quick, if I grab an initial side right here, and I want to bust out an angle here, or over here, or over here. Now, remember, these open like a Japanese fan. Whoa! There's going to be an uncountably infinite number of angles that I can play with. However, we just want to grab what I refer to as home base angles. Okay, so I'm going to change this back to black, and I'm going to I'm going to just play ball here for a minute. I'm going to use both pages for this little display. I'm going to just grab first quadrant. All right, now again, I keep saying this, we're on the unit circle, so x squared plus y squared equals 1. Your spidey sense might start tingling about some stuff like that, but we'll, I'll elaborate on x squared plus y squared equals 1 here in a moment. All right, what I would like to do is I would like to figure out the sine, the cosine, and the tangent of theta equals pi force. Let's get our brain wrapped around exactly what pi force really is. So we know pi force is in radians, so I'm going to multiply just, just so I know what I'm doing by 180 degrees divided by pi. My pi's cancel, and I end up with, if you divide 180 by 2, you get 90, and if you divide that by 2, you get 45 degrees. So I'm going to try and figure out what the, the sine, the cosine, and the tangent of a 45 degree angle are. And I'm going to do it. It's funny. I keep referring to leaving the geometric context to go to the trigonometric or the coordinate context. But for this, I'm actually going to borrow from it again. Now, let's see if you remember from geometry. If I build a 45-45-90 triangle, okay? So here's my 45 degree. Here's another 45 degree, because we know it's going to be an isosceles. Now, th look, this pi force, remember, this equals pi force. So basically, what I'm doing is I'm sucking out another little triangle right there. Now, remember, the radius of this is 1, because we pull it off the unit circle. So I know this side's going to be 1, and I know this side's going to be 1. Which means, by Pythagorean's theorem, I know that this is going to be the square root of 2, because... This is equal to the square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared. Now, if I go back over here, let me go ahead and change colors. If I go back over here, do you see that this point right here matches to this point right here? And if I drop that straight down, that's exactly the same as if I drop this, whoops, if I drop this straight down. Now, we know from our geometry that dropping that altitude of that triangle cuts the opposite side in half because it's isosceles, so this length is root 2 over 2. Okay? Now, excuse me, if this is root 2 over 2, now this is where I'm going to do just a little bit of voodoo. Check this out. We know that if this angle here is pi fourths, and that's yet another right triangle, then this angle Let's change colors real quick. This angle right here must also be pi force or 45 degrees. So I'm actually going to use the exact same property twice. It's a clever little geometric trick, and that tells me that this vertical distance right here is the square root of 2 over 2. Pretty fancy, huh? Just use a little Pythagorean theorem, makes it fun. Most importantly, what we get out of that, change colors, 
what we get out of that is that this point is the square root of 2 over 2, comma, the square root of 2 over 2, because this horizontal distance is root 2 over 2, and this vertical distance is root 2 over 2. Hey, guess what? We have a point on the unit circle, which you can probably imagine what that gives us. Hopefully, at this point, you're starting to see where this is going. The cosine of pi, or excuse me, the sine of pi fourths, which is the same as the sine of 45 degrees, is the y value whoop, right there. So it's going to be square root of 2 over 2. The cosine of pi fourths is equal to the x value right there, which is the square root of 2 over 2. And then let's make sure I don't run out of juice down here. The tangent of pi fourths is equal to y over x. Well, anything divided by itself, you guessed it, is 1. That's pretty cool, huh? Okay, I want you to think about that for just a sec. If you want to, I'm not going to give you a break or anything because you can think about or because you can play with it in your own head. If I have sine, I have cosecant because they're reciprocals of one another. If I have cosine, I have secant because they're reciprocals of one another. And if I have tangent, I have cotangent. So guess what? You have six new trig values. Okay, I'm going to steal another point on the unit circle that I know exists. And remember, anytime you've got a unit, a, a, excuse me, a point on the unit circle, you've got sine, cos, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent, which is cool. Okay, you ready for this? I think you'll like this. Again, we're just going to play ball in the first quadrant. So here's my unit circle, badly drawn. Get a little better though, all right. Plus y squared equals 1. And what I'm going to steal is, I'm going to steal point right out here and I'm gonna call this the point for which theta equals pi thirds now hopefully you're starting to get used to converting these things from radians which pi thirds is because there's no degrees and if I convert these things into an angle I'm gonna take 180 degrees and divide it by pi pi's go away and guess what I have a nice 60 degree angle now just like I did over here with these guys over here, I'm going to do exactly the same sort of trick, but I'm going to change my triangle. Instead of a 45, 45, 90, hopefully you all remember your equilateral triangle. And we're going to watch how this thing plays out. Sorry, it's not quite equilateral, but it's close enough. Now, hopefully you also remember that equilateral triangles are equiangular, again, from your geometric experience. In other words, these angles all have to be the same whoops, have to be the same uh, measure. So let me figure out where my eraser is when we get started. All right, now watch. I know over here on the unit circle that, that length right there is 1, and that that angle, pi thirds, is actually 60 degrees. It's the same angle. So I'm going to steal that fact here for a sec. I'm going to steal that side as 1 and that angle as 60. So you could kind of see how the unit circle would kind of come down through like that. But remember, all I'm concerned with is building this point. So all I need is that length and that length. Well, check it out. If I do that, remember this side used to be 1 because it's equilateral, although it doesn't look the same. So this side right here is 1 half. It's cut in half. Now, using Pythagoras, I can show, and hopefully you've seen this before, that this is root 3 over 2, which is the square root of 1 squared plus 1 half squared. Now, look at what that just did for us. If I know that this distance right here is 1 half, and this distance right here is root 3 halves, or root 3 over 2, guess what I have? I'm even going to change colors. I'm so excited about it. I have the point 1 half comma root 3 over 2. And guess what that gives us? It gives us sine, cosine, and tangent. So let's make this thing. You ready? So I know that the sine of pi thirds, which is 60 degrees, is the y value of this, which is root 3 halves. I know that the cosine of pi thirds, which is 60 degrees, is the short side, or 1 half. And I know that the tangent of pi thirds is equal to root 3 over 2 over 1 over 2. My 2's cancel. 
and I get root 3. And of course, if I have sine, cos, and tan, I have cosecant, secant, and cotan. Now, there's an even cooler thing here. If I can do pi thirds, which I did right here, then I can do pi six. I'm going to use exactly the same triangle. And let's see if you can figure out how I do this. I'm going to draw, I'm not even going to redraw the triangle. I'm just going to steal from it wholesale. All right, you ready? Now pi thirds, excuse me, pi six is going to be about there. And I'm going to let theta equal pi six. Whoops, theta equals pi six. Pi 6 times 180 degrees divided by pi, you guessed it, is 30 degrees. Now watch this. Watch how kind of cheap I get this one for. That angle right here when I drop this altitude, this angle right here was cut in half, which gives me a 30 degree angle. Which means if this is 30 degrees right here and this is 1, remember it's on the unit circle, so that's 1, that means I get exactly the same I get exactly the same triangle right here. The only difference is, is now, now I want to change colors. Now, this side is 1 half, and this side is root 3 halves for exactly the same reason. Check it out. The side opposite the 30 degree angle is a half right there. The side adjacent to the 30 degree angle is root 3 over 2. Guess what I have? I have myself a point, which is root 3 over 2, comma, 1 half, which, as you can probably tell, is going to give me my sine, my cos, my tangent, and therefore my cosecant, my secant, and my cotan for those values. So let's do it real quick. I got sine of pi 6 equals 1 half, cosine of pi 6 equals root 3 halves, or root 3 over 2, and the tangent of pi 6 is equal to 1 over 2 over root 3 over 2. 2's cancel, and I end up with 1 over root 3. Now, that, that's ugly. I, by now, hopefully, we see that we don't want to um, have a rational in the denominator, or excuse me, an irrational in the denominator, so I do what's called rationalizing the fraction, and I end up with root 3 over 3, or rationalizing the denominator. Wow! Check that out. Now, this is going to culminate into something that's really, really important for everybody. 